Mountains. Why are they so intriguing? Why do we find the need to climb to the top of one of these things? Is it for bragging rights? I mean, who really cares if you made it to the summit of Mount Everest, right? Personally, I find the challenge rewarding, both the hike itself and finally making it to the summit. We've challenged the beasts many times. Brazil was an upward battle that required ropes and chains. Jordan was both a wet hike and an exhausting dry hike. And in Mexico, well, we got ourselves stuck in some Mayan mud. But this next mountain would be the ultimate hike that would both challenge us physically and mentally. We've never pushed our bodies this far to the limit before. It's going to be a grueling four-day hike in the country of Peru. It'll be us versus nature as we trek our way up the mighty Inca Trail that'll lead us straight to Machu Picchu. So if you're not already sitting down, then hurry up to your favorite chair and join us on our adventure, our Stein Venture. We are in the lobby waiting for our van to come get us, or bus. It is 5.12 a.m. Everybody say hi. Hi, morning diary. <laughs> Good morning, diary. <laughs> and we are heading up to the mountain to get trekking. Cusco is located in southeastern Peru near the Urubamba Valley of the Andes Mountain Range. This would be our starting point before we head out onto the Inca Trail. The air is thin up here, so you want to come a couple days early before your trek to acclimate. Nobody's got time for altitude sickness on the trail. Double your intake of water and don't drink alcoholic beverages. This will help you acclimate faster and prevent you from getting a nasty headache. From Cusco, we hop on a bus and head northwest to the small town of Piscachucho. This is where the Inca Trail begins. Don't forget your passport because you'll need that in order to hike the trail. We made it to the beginning of Machu Picchu. We're just starting day one. We've got some heavy ass packs. Probably about 20 pounds. Once we got the okay from our team leader, we met up with our group and took a quick snapshot of us. It was a beautiful day and we felt strong and ready to take on any obstacle ahead of us. The porters were already on their way to our first camp, and now it is just the amazing scenery that surrounds us and our own ability to finish this amazing journey. Word to the wise, pack as light as you can. That 20 pound pack on your back is going to feel more like 50 by the end of the day. One mile in, got a couple of cheeks. Hiking in high altitude is much different than hiking in low altitude. You get tired much easier due to the lack of oxygen. So make sure you drink lots of water. There's no need to carry much water. Just bring some cash and buy it on the trail. You don't want to carry all that extra weight. We also bought some coca leaves to help us with the altitude. Buy some extra to give to your porters. They do a lot for you, so treat them well. Denise. Good job, mules. Horses. What are they? <laughs> Say hola. Hi to me, amigos. <laughs> I don't think she likes me. Hey, but I did buy this from her, so she should like me. And these are the coca leaves that you put in between your teeth right here to chew to help with the acclimation and hydration. It's so cool to me that these places grow the herbs that you need for your local environment to survive and get by. Along the trail, you'll meet some friendly locals. They're all curious nice. about you and want to know where you came from. <laughs> Our first stop of the day was Patalagta ruins. We only got to see these ruins from afar. The Inca Trail's length is 26 miles. That's 42 kilometers of pure Peruvian power that connects several Incan archaeological sites. After 10 hours of hiking, we finally made it to day one base camp. Woo! How do you feel? I feel wide awake. 
wiped out. <laughs> How do you feel? Freaking exhausted. <laughs> We were tired and hungry, and some of us wanted to turn around. This was no walk in the park, that's for sure. Day one was challenging, but we heard day two was even worse. You tend to sleep better when you're overly tired. Our first night was a challenge. You had to get used to sleeping on a thin half inch mattress pad. Today, we were offered something that would save our backs and make the hike more enjoyable. For 20 US dollars, we hired a porter to take our backpacks the rest of the way until day four. Day two was the most exhausting experience of my entire life on this planet. We were about to climb to Dead Woman's Pass, the highest point of the trail. The terrain can be quite rocky and steep, so pack some great hiking shoes and take along some poles for extra balance. You'll need it up here. from our group. Now I'm now the Backstreet Boys. Having my own concert here. <laughs> Let me show you the view. I don't know if you can see much. It's so cool here. There's cities or little towns off to the side everywhere. Just locals and horses on the trail. Day two is all uphill. High, high, high altitude. The higher you climbed, the closer you got to the clouds. You can almost reach out and touch them. Dead Woman's Pass is called so because the mountain looks like the profile of a woman looking up at the sky. This part of the hike was a grueling straight uphill battle between the Inca steps and your knees. The higher you go, the slower you are. The oxygen thins, fatigue sets in, and it seems like there's no end to this mountainous hell of a path. Summited. What makes Dead Woman's Pass so famous is its altitude. It's the highest and most dreaded point of the Inca Trail. And nearly 5,905 feet higher than the altitude of Machu Picchu itself. At the end of each day, our porters would be cheering us on. We did it. And the hardest part of the trail was over. It's all downhill from here, right? Day three would be the longest stretch of hike yet. And we learned today that there would be one more tall mountain to pass. It's the very top of day three. Uh, I think you got the idea by my breaths, but I'm dead. <laughs> um, we've been hiking for probably about an hour doing straight stairs, straight steps. But apparently, it's the best day of the hike. It's the one that is the most outstanding. We'll see more glaciers, a lot more ruins and remains. And I feel like right now I should be playing the song, I'm on top of the world. I'm on top of the world. You literally feel like you're on top of the world while hiking this awesome trail. We got a glimpse of what Machu Picchu might look like with Sayak Marca, a much smaller Incan ruin that is believed to be a village as well as a sacred area dedicated to the mountains. The word Sayak Marca means a place you can't enter, inaccessible town, which made us want to enter it even more. The layout of the settlement is maze-like and tightly organized. A line of observation platforms ran between here and Machu Picchu. And it seems likely that the Incas used a signaling system to send information, warning of the approach of important people, for example, up and down this line. Day three was definitely a lot easier than day two, and the scenery was simply breathtaking. We even encountered a cool cave. This fascinating trail that the Incas created had it all. Besides yeah, finally getting to Machu Picchu, this by far was my favorite day of the hike. Oh, and if you ever hear a porter coming from behind you, move to the side away from the cliff. These superhuman beings seem like they have all the energy in the world. Maybe it was due to all the coca leaves they chewed. We were exhausted after our long hike, 
and once we got to camp, all I wanted to do was sleep. One of the porters wanted to show us a secret ruin not far from the camp. Cool. This is Wenewena, and I'm so glad we went. My legs were on fire for some much needed rest, but this place was amazing. Tucked away in the corner of a mountainside, Wenewena is strategically placed for both farming and looking out for potential threats to the community. We didn't have much time to explore due to the sun going down, but we managed to scurry our way around the rooms and up the steps to see the whole complex. And when we finally got back to our camp, we were greeted by a couple of alpacas. It looks like it was dinner time for them as well. Our last night camping, we received a surprise. A, we made it to Machu Picchu cake. It was so good. But the question here is, how did they bake a cake way out here? It's 3.30 a.m. right now. It was time to finish our hike and see the mighty Pichu at the end of the long golden brick road. Today was finally the day, and we were more than excited. The weather was perfect. We just had to climb one more set of vertical steps. These steps were called the monkey steps. They led to the sun gate that was the hiker's entrance to Machu Picchu. One of the few major pre-Columbian ruins found nearly intact, Machu Picchu was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. It's also one of the new seven wonders of the world. When you first witness the beautiful wonder, you can't help but tear up a bit. Our four-day challenge came to a rewarding end, and we were hoping for a beautiful sunny day, and that's what we got. We even received a warm welcome from an alpaca family. <laughs> the dwellings at Machu Picchu were probably built and occupied from the mid 15th to the early or mid 16th century. Several dozen skeletons were excavated there in 1912. And because most of these were initially identified as female, it was led to believe Machu Picchu was a sanctuary for the Virgins of the Sun, the Chosen Women, an elite Inca group Technology at the turn of the 21st century, however, identified a significant proportion of males and a great diversity in physical types. Both skeletal and material remains now suggest to scholars that Machu Picchu served as a royal retreat. The reason for the site's abandonment is also unknown, but lack of water may have been a factor. It truly amazes me how they built this city high up on a cliff. Why did they build this city in the clouds when the main source of water was in the valley below them? There's plenty to see and do in the complex and get there as early as possible to avoid the crowds. You'll enjoy your time here more so because it can get overcrowded fast in the afternoon. We really enjoyed Machu Picchu and the terrific Inca Trail. After a four-day hike, I was super excited to hop on the train back to Cusco and just put up my achy feet and relax. The train was comfortable and the view was even better. There was also a little surprise waiting for us on board. A Peruvian show. You clap your hands at the beat of the music. You smile. You laugh. Some even dance. This was a wonderful way to end our trip. One of my favorite quotes in life is, you don't choose a life, you live one. You travel to see the world, to learn about it, and meet new friends. This hike changed my life forever. The experience humbled me, both spiritually and physically. Now the Inca Trail is not for everyone, but I'm sure glad I did it. Would I do it again? No, only because there's so much more in this world I want to see. A big thank you to Liz Logan for the awesome video and commentary. This video couldn't have been made without you. I'm going to enjoy the view. See you later. Peace. On the next Stein Ventures, it's time to travel back to the Middle East to Dubai. This city has so much to offer and we want to try and do it all. We only have a limited amount of time in this fascinating country to really soak up the culture. But I guarantee you, we'll definitely make it worth your while. 
So join us next episode for a good time in the desert of the United Arab Emirates. If you like this Stein Ventures, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like our video. And remember, keep on traveling.